Welcome to another episode of Mad Props. This is, I think, episode 81 now of Mad Props. We really thank you for being here. Another audio-only episode for those people looking on YouTube is another audio-only. The best place to listen to the audio-onlys is at schnabelstudios.com slash madprops, by the way. Mad Props Pod, I should say, by the way. Um, Because then you can listen to it. You can look at old episodes. And it's just the best way. I think it's the best place for you to get it. So go try that if you haven't already. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we still appreciate you being here and listening to us on another great episode of Mad Props. Before we get started, make sure you follow us at Mad Props Pod on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to see everything, including the Mad Props stuff, because it does post on both, go follow Schnabel Studios as a lot more is being built on the Schnabel Studios page than even the Mad Props page, which we we're trying to pay more attention to um i actually haven't posted as much on these pages the the schnabel studios page gets stuff just about every day but mad props has been not getting a lot of love and it's not because mad props has been you know audio only and short episodes and stuff like that um it's just not getting a lot of love because i'm kind of retooling all of this stuff as we move into a new section of life basically um so that's what we're doing. We're we're uh, we're retooling Mad Props page. We're retooling Schnabel Studios. So definitely go follow us. Follow Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, X slash Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, and YouTube. And please, if you're listening, go do that. As we are trying to build um, a, a base, we're trying to build a fan base. We're trying to build a following, and we really appreciate you guys doing that. If you do. Make sure you vote for uh, Mad Props with Chris Schnabel on the podcastawards.com. It is your final opportunity to do it if you are listening to this on July 31st, because that is when the voting ends. So if you are listening to this today, July 31st, I say today like it could be any day. If you're listening to this July 31st, go to podcastawards.com and vote for Mad Props and best, uh, best podcast in society and culture, best podcast people's choice. And best male host of a podcast, which is me. Um, all of them will say Mad Props with Chris Novel. Go vote. We really appreciate you voting. We want to try to at least get nominated or make the final nominations, I should say. Um, that would be really cool for one one thing. But, you know, it is what it is. If not, we'd really appreciate you doing that if you do. Anyway, go do all that. Vote for Mad Props. Today we're really just going to be chatting Um I want to give an update on last week. I did say I would do it. I want to give an update on um, my my last shoot because it was probably the coolest shoot I've ever done in my life. Um, and then we're just going to chat about some other stuff because I just want to chat on this episode. This is the last episode in transition. So if, if anybody's wondering if you've missed the last couple episodes, um, my whole life has been in transition. I previously left my full-time job to take on freelancing as a full-time job. Um, so it's been a lot of trying to get clients and kind of figuring my stuff out. And at the same time, figuring out how we can really boost upon this podcast and what we can do to make sure that we're making the most of this podcast. Now, while we do that, obviously we're still putting out the podcast. Like I don't want to, I don't want to take any weeks off. I was told maybe I should take a couple weeks off, retool it and come back. But I don't want to do that. I'd rather have some 10-minute episodes and and some episodes that like are just me chatting on, on the microphone than losing out on a consistent fan base that is listening to episodes and stuff like that, even though some of them can be tough and some of them aren't. But anyway, basically this episode is going to be me talking about my shoot. And then the, the big thing I want to talk about is Deadpool and Wolverine. So any Sketching Up fans, anybody that's listened to Sketching Up, I know Sketching Up hasn't been out in a while, a couple months. Um, we're not sure if it's coming back, but you know what? You're going to get your Sketching Up fix in this one. And it'll probably be the title of this episode, to be honest with you. So there are not going to be any breaks, not any music. If you've already been listening, you know the music played in the beginning. We're just going to go right into it and get going and then get in, and get moving, as they would say. So make sure you follow us on all social medias and let's go. So... Last last week, um, we had the opportunity to do another freelancing shoot. Um, as people may know, if you don't, if you're just listening, you hadn't listened to previous episodes. We just did a couple shoots with Dak Prescott of the Cowboys and Ezekiel Elliott of also the Cowboys, um, and with the same group, 
we got another opportunity. So when I was at the Dak Prescott, um, when I was at the Dak Prescott camp, I was talking to the guy that runs the camp, and we were just chatting. And somewhere along the line, I told him I'm going up to New York to visit family and and see my friend and stuff like that. And he asked me like what I'm doing one of the days. I'm like, well, I'm actually free that day. And he told me, if you can make your way to Fordham University, we can use you at a camp run by Aaron Judge. Now, for people that may not know, I am a huge, huge Yankees fan. The logo of this podcast for the first 60-ish, maybe more episodes, maybe around 60s when I changed it, 60 episodes was me wearing my Yankees hat, pointing to the NY. Yankees are like, I bleed pinstripes, all right? Like, huge i'd actually i'm doing this kind of late because i just got done watching the yankees beat the phillies so i i'm a huge fan ginormous fan and aaron judge is one of my favorite players for sure like i'm a huge aaron judge fan and he's he's fantastic he's amazing and he's he's a great he's a great player so i had this opportunity to go meet aaron judge and and play or and 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 film him and film Aaron Judge, that's what I meant to say. And I obviously took the opportunity. I was free that day. And I got to work with the captain of the New York Yankees, Aaron Judge, and his All Rise Foundation as they did a baseball camp. And it was surreal. Um, first of all, Aaron, very good guy. He, uh, I wouldn't say that we were best friends out there talking all the time, but I got I got to talk to him a little bit. I got some conversations in, you know, I'm with him for I was with him for four hours. You know, you're not going to not chat, but I got to talk with him and, and chat with him. And um, honestly, just a genuine dude, like you get a little nervous when you meet people you're you're very big fans of like I don't get as as many people that listen to this know I don't get starstruck and I didn't get starstruck in this situation either actually but when you meet somebody you're a big fan of like I'm a big fan of Aaron Judge like if when you meet somebody like that you get you, you do get a little worried like what if they're a jerk because it's happened I've had people like that when I was I mean an example, and I, I've said this on air before, an example is when I was in college, I had the opportunity to interview Rev Run. And I, I thought Rev Run was kind of kind of a jerk. And, I mean, he's Rev Run. That's It's true. Like, he's one of the pioneers of hip-hop. He, you know, one of the front men of Run DMC. Um, but it just, he, he was kind of a jerk. And he was, you know, he big time us. We were a college radio station. I was like 20 at the time of interviewing me. I might have been 19 even at the time interviewing him. And yeah, but Aaron Judge was not like that. Aaron Judge was a really good guy, um, really good with the kids. You could just tell he's a nice dude. He's he's a really nice dude. So I, I was very excited for that. I don't really have too much to do about this. I, what I will say is he follows Chanel Studios you will see a lot more to come out of this. There's already been a photo uh, posted. There will be a video posted on the day of this release. So you'll see a little bit of a video. I plan on putting way more videos out <laughs> and way more photos out because this was a surreal experience. I just want All I want to do is share this experience. So there will be a lot more to come from this on the Schnabel Studios page. I'm not going to take up too much time of this podcast with it because you can go see everything that was on there. There's not really much more to say other than I'm, I got to meet Aaron Judge. I got to work with Aaron Judge, and it was a really cool time. Not much more to say. I will say on top of that, um, after I got done with this shoot, I actually got to go see B. Gill, Brandon Gill, which going back to off, if you've followed since off stage, Brandon Gill is one of the guys I worked on off stage with a lot. He's been a big part of Schnabel Studios back when it was Schnabel Productions and actually it was Chris Schnabel Productions and we were, you know, freelancing for free and for a buck if we could. Um that he was he was basically my second hand man. And it was um it was great to go see him, see how he's doing, catch up with him. So I got to see him right after the shoot and um 
that's probably the other than meeting Aaron Judge, that's probably the biggest news to come out of that because um it's been a minute with B. Gill and I really I love the kid and I appreciated seeing him. So that's really all that happened on that day. Um then uh that other than that, the only thing I really want to talk about is uh is that Deadpool and Wolverine movie. I have a lot of opinions on it. I'll go through it. I mean, it's it's much easier to talk about it with multiple people. Unfortunately, I was going to have somebody come on. They just couldn't do it at the last minute. And, you know, you got to get this thing out there. So uh, I'm going to talk about Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm going to talk about what I liked about it, what I maybe didn't like about it, what I thought about it as a whole. And we'll go all the way to me rating it maybe out of 10. I, I like the Midnight Boys. I like how they do their things. So maybe we'll do something more along the, the lines of their scale. Um, I don't really do it that often. So I feel like stealing another show's scale is okay. So from the beginning, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the movie. Now, this is a movie I saw two times. I saw it when it first came out. And then I saw it again the next day. There's not because I didn't go like I need to go see this movie again. I wasn't like I have to run to the theater. I I can't I can't not watch this again. The first time I saw it was um, with my dad, and we went and watched it when it came out because I want I didn't want to get spoiled. I didn't want anything like that. So we went and watched it the first time. The second time is because I was now in Buffalo with uh, my friends. John Chandler and uh, Haley. Actually, John wasn't there yet. And Christina Haley's fiance was there. And Gabby Chandler's now fiance. Congratulations to those two. We were all there. And then obviously got uh, Gabby. Obviously. But Gabby's family was also there. And, and we wanted to go see it. So we went to go see it then too. Um, it was... I will say this, the first time I saw it, nothing against seeing it with those people, but the, this has nothing to do with the people I saw it with on either side. The first time I saw it was a much better experience than the second time I saw it, and it actually has nothing to do with the movie. Um, I, yes, like things happening in the movie made it very exciting, but the reason I'd say one over the other is because the first time I saw it was like right as it came out, on the day it comes out and like there was the cheering, there was the yelling there, you know, the fun stuff you get at those Marvel movies, especially when they hit you in, in the face with nostalgia and stuff like that and cameos, which is obvious because it's, you know, Marvel. And, uh, so that, that didn't happen really in the second one. Like there was none of that. There was no cheering. There was no applauding. There was like, Oh my God, there's really none of that. So, the first time I saw it was definitely my favorite time seeing it. And the second time, it was also pretty good, but not as good as the first time. Okay, so from this point on, this point on, no holds bars. I'm just going to talk about the movie, talk about what I liked, disliked, all that stuff. If you haven't seen it and you don't want it spoiled, come back later. You know the time, Mark. It's got to be somewhere around 13 minutes in. I should look at the time and tell you, but I know for a fact it's somewhere about 13, 13 and a half minutes in at this point, uh, maybe 14 minutes. You just come back to that timestamp, and then you can you can listen. If you don't care or if you've already seen it, then here we go. Let's let's go on this. All right. So I genuinely liked the movie. I liked it a lot. I loved the opening scene and not for the exact reason people might think the opening scene the bye 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 scene where he's fighting with wolverine's um bones that he finds i think that scene's hilarious when he you know comes out and he's like you know i always wanted to team up but you're pretty dead that was hilarious to me but what i really loved about it is when this movie was said it was going to be made the first thing they said is we assure you that this movie will not, um, they said, we assure you this movie will not hold back with blood, with violence, with language, all that stuff. And from the beginning of the movie, they proved that to be correct. Like, there was a ton of blood, there was a ton of gore, they're all that stuff they put right into the first scene to show to show you like listen we know what kind of movie this is it's rated R and we're we're making sure you know 
that we are all in. And I loved that. I absolutely loved that. So I love that scene. Um, I thought the movie was absolutely hilarious. I thought it had so many good lines. It was probably one of, if not the funniest superhero movie ever. I can't... If we're going off popular opinion, obviously there's a bunch of Deadpools that you could put together. I think this was the funniest Deadpool of the three. Don't worry. I, I got more to say about this movie. So I think it was the funniest Deadpool of the three. Um, so that would beat all those. People like to say that Thor Ragnarok's funny. Um, I don't mind Thor Ragnarok. I enjoyed it when I first watched it. I think they could have... I, I, I'm more upset with Thor Ragnarok that they took Planet Hulk and just kind of threw it into him, which they love to do with the Hulk, right? Because they don't have the property rights. But they just threw him into a movie, kind of. Like, that, That like, that's what frustrated me more. I wouldn't, I didn't, I don't know if I found it as funny. Like, the other thing about Thor is I know, like, a lot of people don't like the direction they went with him. Like, I don't mind Chris Hemworth. Chris Hemsworth's Thor, but I do know a lot of people liked it and like the jokester, the jokester Thor. You know, he's supposed to be this god, this almighty god, and he's just a clown. Um, but anyway, I didn't think that was funnier than this anyway. Um, I I don't th- I like Shazam. I don't think it's funnier than this. Um, are there any other Marvel movies that are supposed to be funny? I mean, other than the Deadpools, you know, I don't think the Spider Mans are a, a comedy. I don't think. Um, I know there's like comedy in those movies, and like that's a big problem. That, that's a, that's a podcast for another day, right? How superhero movies are now the comedies of today, where the Instead of seeing like a Will Ferrell movie, you get your comedy from this, you know. So you you want it to be funny, and that's why Thor has gone the way he has because that's what you need. Um, Punisher, I know that's not a movie, but or not Punisher, or Peacemaker, I know that's not a movie, but that was pretty funny. Not funnier than this. Oh, man, I can't think. If I can't think, if if I'm not thinking of an easy one, just roast me in the comments because I should be able to get the funny movie superhero movies. I guess Guardians of the Galaxy can fall into there, but again, I don't think it was funnier than this. There's just funny moments, you know. Um, played for comedy, so I would say this is the top, the funniest superhero movie probably ever. Probably ever, and when it comes to comedy, but it lacks some other stuff. But we'll get into that in a second. So that that was another thing I liked. It was really funny. I liked how um, Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds played off each other. I thought the two characters together were great. I thought they they worked really well together. I really truly do. Um, it was like kind of like what we've been waiting for. There were some scenes even I got pulled into. You know, I'm I'm very much the kind of person that's like, yeah, they did this for the fans, and it doesn't make any sense to the story, but they did it for the fans, and I got sucked into some of that stuff where I got excited because I I was just happy to see Deadpool in the MCU. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really, even though he wasn't really in the MCU at all except for like one scene. I was just excited to see him in the MCU and he's going to be part of all this at some point. And I can't wait to see why Thor was holding him. Like that scene was funny and they played it throughout the whole thing. Um, Before I keep getting the good, let's get into some of the bad. Because there was a lot of flaws in this movie. Um, I would say the biggest flaw of the movie is the story was not great. Um... It was not a well put together story. It's not that it didn't really make sense. Um, I guess it made sense. It just I didn't think it was that great of a story. I don't think it was really well put together or well thought out. And I think the comedy also got in the way of the story they were trying to tell a lot of the time. 
So it kind of just, you know, it just kind of made it so it wasn't that great of a story to follow. The comedy kind of made up for it movie-wise, but it made it a movie like Deadpool 1 I can watch a million times. I love that movie. But this one I probably wouldn't watch a million times. I'd watch it. I watched it twice. And, you know, maybe I'll watch it a couple more times. But, like, it's not a movie. I'd be like, let's watch Deadpool and Wolverine. It's just not. Um, that The comedy was great. I really enjoyed it. I, I, I know this is Deadpool's character. And trust me, I've become a very big fan of Deadpool. I will I will be the first to admit I was not a big fan when it started. And I've become a big fan since the movies. I, I have no problem admitting that. But the the fourth wall breaking, it just was, it, it was overdone. It was overcooked. And I know Deadpool does it. it. It was just like every scene had some sort of fourth wall break. Like, the scene where he is told he's going to the MCU and stuff like that, and he says, excuse me, and he goes over and he says, suck it, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland or something like that. That is a perfect Deadpool break the fourth wall scene. When they're they're walking together, and I can't remember what Wolverine says, but he says something. He's like, well, I'm telling Blake or something like that. That's funny. I enjoy that. But, man, it was just seen. Every every other word had to be something fourth wall break. And it was just a little, little bit too much. Like, it does get to a point where it can get too meta. And it, it got to that point. And it got way, way, way too meta. And it took it took away a little bit. Even some of the comedy, like even when you find it funny, you watch it a second time, you're like, all right. So this is the thing. When I think of that, the fourth wall breaking is being too much. The first time I watched it, I found a lot of them very funny. I, I thought that the first time I saw it too, I was like, there's a little too many fourth wall breaks. I still found it funny. But then, uh, but then like the second time I watched it, you really notice them the second time really, really, really noticed them the second time. And that part was tough. It was just, it's just really tough. There was too many of them. Too many of them. They needed to cut back on the fourth wall breaks. Um, Just keep the ones that are very much like Deadpool. I think the reason I got so annoyed is some of them weren't, they weren't in character. Believe it or not, I didn't feel like some of them were in character. If that's even believable to say. So that part was tough as well. Um, the void, I think, was not a great set. Um, I understand it's supposed to be a void, void of things. Um, I thought I thought the twentieth century fox thing was funny. I thought the Tor- I think it was the Toronto needle was funny. Um, being in the void, obviously, with I think it's Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's from Australia, right? I don't know. He might be English. That might be the worst take I've ever had. Um, (laughs) I know Ryan Reynolds is from Canada. Obviously, Deadpool is from Canada as well. Um, I just didn't like... I feel like you can take a set like that that's supposed to be blank and empty and still make it an interesting set. Like It just wasn't an interesting set. I didn't think it was an interesting background. I didn't really enjoy that that section of the movie uh, for that reason. And the worst part is like the biggest fight in my eyes was in that location. And it kind of just took away a little bit from it because we had to deal with the ugly background that it came with that, that first fight of Deadpool and Wolverine in the void, like, that's the one we were waiting for, right? Like, that's the one. And it didn't matter because we had that stupid, the stupid void in the background. So that wasn't fun. Let's switch back over to the good because we talked about the fight. I enjoyed most all the fighting scenes. I say most all because I have to think about it for a second to make sure it is all. But I really enjoyed the fighting scenes. I thought they were really fun. I... um. I just thought they were really well done. 
I enjoyed all of them. Another thing I really enjoyed were the cameos. I loved Wesley Snipes coming back. I loved Elektra. Uh, was that Jennifer Gardner? And uh, Channing Tatum's Gambit. Obviously, the Gambit movie didn't get made. So putting him on a screen, like giving him that that opportunity um, was really fun. And I thought they played him for comedy pretty well. I don't know if I want to... A lot of people didn't like that Gambit like was... He was just a little too unserious. People are like, hey, you finally got the part to be done. Like, maybe you should, you know, cook a little bit with it, Channing. And um, I I don't know if I agree with that statement. Like, I get it. Like, the movie didn't get made. And you're like, you should, you should cook. You should cook. Maybe they'll make it. But they're not going to. And I thought they played it pretty well. Like, I thought his character was funny. I thought the whole thing was funny. I thought there was another fourth wall break with Gambit in there um, saying my name is Jeff. And that part, I'm like, you know, when now other characters are fourth wall breaking, which there's a couple of them, it it just gets tough. It just gets really tough. Um, Nice pool was amazing. The funniest line in the movie to me, like it got me both times pretty well is when he says, how long does it take you to regenerate? And he looks and goes, regenerate? Both times I thought that was hilarious. I thought it was so good. There's a lot of really good lines, but... That one was really good. That one was really good. Uh, All right. So overall review of the movie based on everything I just said. Because I don't want to just list things I liked and list things I didn't like. Um, Overall review of the movie. Definitely worth the watch. Really funny. Story's tough. Um, Characters were good. I thought the characters were really good. Um, I thought... Except for... um, Paradox. Didn't think that character was great. I thought it was very overplayed. I don't think it was necessary to have both villains that they did. Um, It's fine. I mean, it worked. But I don't think they needed to do exactly what they did with two villains. And I just didn't really like his character. I thought it was just like over, way, way, way overplayed. I didn't think they needed to overplay it that much, but they did. Other than that, I thought the characters were great. I thought all the other characters in the entire movie were fantastic. That was the only one I didn't really like um, was Paradox. But overall, I think the movies are worth the watch. Uh, rewatchability. Rewatchability. I don't know what to give this one. Like, I want to give it like a seven maybe. Six or seven. I think it's rewatchable because it's it's as rewatchable as any comedy is going to be. Like, how rewatchable is a comedy in your eyes? If you want to put it as a 10, that's fine. To me, I did rewatch it. And the second time around, it was still pretty good. It almost is like No Way Home. I enjoy that movie still. I will watch it multiple times. I, I own it. I bought it on digital so I could watch it again. I thought that movie was really fun because of all the elements of it, right? You know, the three Spider-Mans, everything. I really enjoyed that part. But it probably doesn't have a high rewatchability score for the same reason Deadpool and Wolverine probably doesn't because the story is a little tough. Like... There's just a lot going on in that movie, and the story is kind of pushing along pretty fast, you know. So, same thing with this movie in my eyes. Like, I think the rewatchability goes down because there's a lot of comedy, but the actual, like, story of it is not rewatchable. If it was, if there wasn't comedy in this movie, the rewatchability of this movie would be, like, a three. 
but there is comedy. So I and it does definitely make a huge boost in comedy. Like think of any comedy, right? Like an Adam Sandler movie without the comedy would be like a negative ten. But depending on, you know, how much you like his comedy, it could be like an eight or a nine because you just enjoy his comedy. It's the same I, I think that's the same thing here. Like the story's not gonna keep you but the comedy can keep you coming back because it's pretty good. Um, cameo wise was great too. I mean, we got to see uh, Henry Cavill as Wolverine, which was really cool. Um, having him now, even as just Wolverine for a second in the MCU, maybe that's something more to come. Maybe that was the MCU's. Wolverine, we don't really find out what uh, dimension he was in for that. There's a good chance it could be. I thought that was really fun. Um, yeah, so rewatchability. I'll, I'll give it a seven. I thought the comedy was pretty. I saw it twice. I enjoyed it the second time, so I'll give it a seven. Uh, what what else we got? What else? What other ways to rate a movie do you have? Um. Villains were good, characters were good, story was not good. Will it spawn more? Most likely. It's funny because this is the third, right? But I don't think they called it the trilogy. I don't think they called it the trilogy. Um, Because it's like, it's Disney's first one. So like, they're not going to say it's, the third Deadpool three. That's why it was called Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh, that although MCU does that. They don't have like Avengers two, or Sp- it's not even called Spider Man two. Spider Man Homecoming, Spider Man Far From Home, Spider Man No Way Home. Like that's those are the names of it. They're not they're not like Spider Man one, Spider Man two, Spider Man three. That's not how they name their movies. They name them whatever the whatever the subtitle is. You know, Captain America, Brave New World is not Captain America with four now, three or four, um, which I have a lot of thoughts on that movie, too, with the Red Hulk. Just another putting a Hulk movie inside a different movie to get away with it thing. It's so frustrating. So frustrating. I guess the other one we'll talk about is, does this turn the MCU around? Probably not. Probably not. To be honest, the MCU itself, it had nothing to do with. He goes to the MCU for like five seconds. He doesn't even save the sacred timeline. He just saves the his timeline. I mean, I guess technically he saves all of them. But in reality, he really only saved his timeline. So... I'm going to go with it doesn't have much to do. I the only so the 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 big theory I come out of this and let's for people that didn't see at Comic-Con uh they announced Robert Downey Jr as Doctor Doom. Personally, I'm I am on the I am on the uh majority with this. I wasn't a big fan of it. I'd rather see somebody else do it. For people that know Doctor Doom, he never takes off his mask. So there was really no reason to even announce it would be Robert Downey Jr. Like, because it doesn't have to be Robert Downey Jr. It could be, you know, anyone. Um, that doesn't have to be a face to the character just because in the comics there is, but he never takes off his mask because of his blemish. He has like a blemish and he doesn't want to show the world. So it doesn't really matter. But what. My theory is based on this movie is that that um, Iron Man was a what did they call it a pillar a pillar not pillar person um, an anchor being and I'm gonna assume he was an anchor being and now he's no longer in the sacred timeline so they need to go and find another Robert Downey Jr. to be the anchor being for the main timeline so it doesn't collapse. And they find, uh, you know, this Robert Downey Jr. and bring him in just to find out he's the smartest evil scientist ever. So that's 
Well, my, that's that's what this movie can have on the MCU. Like that's the impact it'll have. Didn't even have an end credit scene or anything like that. Um, and it'll have that Deadpool eventually meet the Avengers at some point, and that'll be really cool. What do I wish to come from this movie? I wish a Spider-Man and Deadpool movie. You know, it was cool to see him with Wolverine, but I'm a big Spider-Man and Deadpool fan. It's one of my favorite comic series, just because those are my two favorite characters. And for them to have a team-up is amazing. We got to see Wolverine. It's time for Spider-Man. Going back to the Robert Downey Jr. thing really quick, one thing that I was excited about is this clearly shows that they're willing to recast people. Like, it's obviously flip-flopped. But if they're willing to recast the Robert Downey Jr. now as Doctor Doom, we're going to see a new Captain America. We're going to see a new Iron Man. We're going to see these new characters without them having to be, you know, someone else. Like, they don't have to be Joe Schmo now becomes Captain America. Like, like Falcon doesn't have to become Captain America. Like, there will be a new Steve Rogers whether it's from a different universe or whatever they do, there will be a new Steve Rogers. I can't believe I forgot. One of the funniest things to me also was the Chris Evans thing. Very predictable from the beginning. Still very funny. Very much appreciated that joke. All right, let's go to the overall. Huh. Starting to lose steam. Um, the overall for me. The overall grade I'll give this. So the the Midnight Boys score is out of ten. An eleven is a game changing. Twelve is you know a top movie ever. It's not one of those. It's not even a ten. It's not a nine either. It's got to be in like the eight range. If it's got to be in like the eight range, the comedy's good. It's rewatchable. It's just the story's not good. But when's a, what's a recent MCU movie that has a good story? But the jokes definitely save it. So I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It is not an 11. It's not a 12. It's not over the scale. No chance. A solid 8 will do. If you haven't seen the movie and you listen to all that, I don't know why you did it. I don't think I spoiled all too much. Actually, I think I spoiled a ton. But <laughs> it's it's a fun movie. Definitely worth the watch. A lot of fun scenes. I missed a lot of things um, with it being late and me being tired. But it, it's a great movie. You should definitely go watch it um, because you'll have fun. You'll have fun at the theater. And that's all of going to the theater is about these days is having some fun. I did, I did find that funny that the popcorn bottles or the popcorn buckets ran out like on the Thursday before. So technically, the movie didn't come out till Friday. And the Thursday before, they ran out of all the buckets, which was just so funny to me. Like, that's how much people wanted those popcorn buckets. Um, But I really enjoyed it. I think it's a good step forward for the MCU. Like, even though the story was kind of tough, like, having, first of all, an R-rated movie was great. Having a a movie that was just enjoyable to watch was really good. I think the big test for this movie is when it comes out on home, like when it comes out on digital or Disney Plus or whatever you want to call it. Watching it then is the big thing. Like, will it still be good when it's on digital? Or did the theater have a lot of impact on it? And we just got to see. You know, we just got to see. That happens a lot with these movies. You love it, love it, love it in the theater. And then you go home and you're like, what am I watching? Happens all the time with these movies. So make sure that you go vote at the Podcast Awards and Best Podcast Society and Culture best uh people's choice for best podcast and best male host vote mad props for christian novel at podcastawards.com if you're listening on july 31st today is the last day to go vote so make sure you get out there and vote we want to try to make it to the next round if not win a dang award but at least making it to the next round would be a pretty cool opportunity so go vote please for mad props for christian novel it's podcastawards.com to go vote Make sure you follow us on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram and Facebook. But if you really want to follow us, if you want to follow everything, including the stuff that goes on Mad Props, go follow Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, 
uh, Twitter slash X, LinkedIn, YouTube, and TikTok. That's the one I'm missing. Go follow us on all those. Uh, go follow us on the, all those accounts and help us grow, help us build, see the stuff coming out, the new judge shoot, uh, stuff about podcast, all that stuff. Go check it out because it's all coming and it's all building right there on the Schnabel Studios page. So you're not going to want to miss that. Um, I think that's really it. Go to schnabelstudios.com to see more videos. Go to schnabelstudios.com to see more podcasts. Go to schnabelstudios.com if you want to interact with us. Go to schnabelstudios.com just for the heck of it. Give us a view, baby. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Mad Props. Um, go see Deadpool and Wolverine if you haven't. It's it's enjoyable. You'll like it. I don't think I dissed it that much. There was definitely a good stretch of negative there at the end, but it's a fun movie. You're going to enjoy it. Go check it out. We love it. All right, tune in next week. Hopefully, we'll be back on video. I can't guarantee it. I am trying to turn the ship around where we have guests and we have, you know, on camera work i just hit my microphone on camera work um so definitely uh check us out next week and hopefully we'll have more to go all right everybody we really appreciate you have a great day make sure you go watch the movie happy august coming up congratulations gabby and chandler on your engagement i'm so proud of you guys i love you guys so much congratulations to my girlfriend mary for doing the bar we really appreciate you out there and love you And uh, we love you all out there that are doing big things. All right. 